All right, this video is of my 12 foot V hold mirror craft. We got it in November of 2012. Um, the trailer had already been galvanized sprayed. We added the pulley wheel, the drop wheel to get it around. It's not that heavy, so it's easy to push. Um, we ran all new electrical straight throughout the entire boat all the way down through the trailer new lights new submersal leds um had to redo the anchor housing since it was all rusted and locked up a uh, new pair anchor on there um, the wheels were in bad shape when i got the trailer um this is one of the originals uh, we were just gonna replace the tires and blast and paint the rims but we found the wheels at harbor freight for 28 bucks a piece and the tires were 21 so you know easy math there just grabbed the whole new set of wheels and tires uh, kept the better of the two as the spares in case you need it it is a brake nose trailer um, basically you can lift the trailer right here at this joint by pulling on the chain and the tab out the whole trailer will lift up so you can drain the boat um, the new conduit all throughout through to the trailer lights all the way down the end um, it was banana yellow when I bought it it still is we'll go down here to the end of the boat oh, there's the new wheels tires 28 bucks at Harbor Freight same exact wheel tire can't really can't beat that. Um, new submersal LEDs. These are the Hallmaster LEDs. I uh, got these on Amazon. Don't remember how much I paid for them, but they seem to work all right. Uh, the guy I bought the trailer from had actually put regular trailer lights on before I bought it, and they weren't submersals. So after the first time the trailer took her plunge, you can imagine what happened. Uh, like I said, it is a mirror craft level float 12 foot V hull. Um, probably not a level float anymore since we've taken quite a bit out of this boat and replaced it. The fuel tank. Um, the boat used to have floats that sat here and there, uh, and the seats are all foam filled. Uh, I don't think it'll do it anymore. Uh, we removed the middle seat and the floats. The idea was that if you filled the entire boat full of water, it wouldn't sink. Uh, it would stay right here at this line. Uh, so if anything ever happened, you wouldn't actually lose the boat. But uh, not anymore. Um, we ran electrical all through this boat. Uh, we'll see the batteries when we get back up to the front. We run a switch panel here. One is for the fish finder. One is for... The trolling motor which we converted to a plug as opposed to a grab on the uh, terminals of the battery um, what else is there I think that's it for right now the idea is to add lights uh, the port and starboard light and the all-around white light uh, as well as a flood light for some nighttime catfishing um, so the switches are all there it's literally just a bolt and go operation from there on out We have a 76 Evinrude 99. Uh, when I bought the boat, it had the 7, 1976 Evinrude 6 on it. Um, I spent the whole day driving out with my brother to about six or seven different boat dealers and marinas. Uh, ended up at Redding Boat Works out in Redding. They took my six horse for I think 450. This was on their showroom floor at nine. Um, and we marked it down and I left paying an even three for the 9.9. Uh, runs strong, it's as tough as it was the day it rolled off the factory. Um, and we have it watered up so we'll fire it in a minute here. <clears throat> Rod holder, that is the mount for the fish finder. Um, this is the original benches that were in here, it is the only one left. Uh, I just haven't gotten around to taking it out and decking it like the rest of the boat, we'll get there. Um, 
I did have to buy a new seat since my wonderful father broke the last one trying to get out of the boat. He made the misstep and fell back in. So I got the big man certified seat here. It's about 18 inches across. Um, the other seat was, it was this seat. It's about maybe 15 across. Uh, comfortable seats, they're both on pedestal swivels. Um, both move around nicely. That one's way more comfortable. These were, I want to say 40 bucks a piece at Walmart actually. And I bought these at Cabela's in December of 14, December of 15. Uh, everything on in stock was like 60% off. So it was 150 or 60 dollar boat seat. I think I paid less than 50 or 60. I don't know. I spent like 500 bucks that day. So who knows how much the seat really cost. Um, winch line is the original. This is what's getting worked on today. It locks up quite a bit. Uh, probably just needs to be greased and untangled. Rolls all the way up the front through new rollers. All the way up underneath the decking to another roller. And then out the past another roller to the front. And then she drops down into the water. Uh, let's talk about the decking in this boat. Um, it was a three seat boat. Just like these. Had three of them. One here. One was here, straight across, which we removed, and the other was here, which we've repurposed for the new front decking. Um, I watched a lot of YouTube videos trying to figure out exactly how to get the deck in the boat. Uh, the problem you run into is that the V-hole bolts are ribbed, so it's not that easy to get. I mean, you can't run a screw through here. You're going to... Either it has to be perfect and you'll just grab a hold of the rib, which is only flat aluminum, um, or you'll go right through the boat, which we don't want to do. Um, so I watched some videos. I actually saw this guy use an aluminum ladder. So I had one laying around. It was actually my grandfather's. So he passed away, and we cut the ladder in half. And I don't know if I can get a shot of it. don't know if you can see the ladder underneath but it's running lengthwise along the boat so it's about here you know in the same spot on the other side and that we screwed down into the ribs with some three-quarter self-tap screws and then we laid the deck on top the deck is then screwed into the ladder um, it really wasn't that hard once we got the screws on the ladder we floored it and then we dropped it in the boat um, it, this is just outdoor carpet I bought at Lowe's uh, it is not marine green carpet um, so this is just regular outdoor carpet it's like 50 60 cents a linear or square foot you buy it by the linear foot and then the glue um, probably one of the more expensive projects of the boat was the actual carpet uh the plywood i had laying around I don't know. it is not marine plywood it's just regular plywood uh you can use marine plywood it'll probably last much longer than this will uh, i'm not totally opposed to using it just at the time you know oh, yeah, didn't want to spend 60 dollars yeah. a sheet on marine wood so we just use regular plywood um the original flooring the original front deck had gone to where the old seat was which was here uh, and then the problem was in the back of the boat we had the battery a six gallon fuel tank and me um, that way just over 300 pounds and uh, there was a lot of weight in the back of the boat plus the gas motor and the electric troller it was uh, sinking so we ran electrical if you can see the conduit it goes underneath all along the floor runs 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 and then we moved this deck up moved the seat up and made this valve storage compartment which just flips up and now we actually have two batteries um one's a 27 one's a 29 uh, we wire them off to a terminal switch so first battery dies i don't know if you can see that 
we just go to the second. Um, if you have anything that needs to run a 24 volt system, if you flip the switch all the way over, it runs both batteries together to make a 24 volt system. Uh, nothing I have is 24 volt. No. But it's convenient. So the negative terminal is down the bottom there. So when we charge, we just grab the negative terminal and then the positive terminal on the battery. When this one's charged, we just move over and grab the positive terminal on that one. So made life a little easier that way. Um, just some flat bar aluminum to hold it up. Now, I try to use aluminum as much as I can. It's lighter, it won't rust. Uh, the other thing we made, and I have to get under here today, we had a little, we had an old screen door. We grabbed the piano hinge off of it and made a little bow storage compartment. Uh, I usually keep my dry bag, uh, the two cycle fuel, life vests, uh, all under there. Um, I keep extra dock lines in here. I just tuck them around since they're out of the way. The dock lines are all right here. They get stuffed back in and I keep this vest, this vest, this vest, and this dry bag in the bow storage. So there's plenty of room in there. Um, when we're trailering, the rods we just tuck straight along here. Uh, and that's go on that side. And then we just leave the tackle boxes and everything against the back of the boat here. It seems to hang out pretty nicely. Just recently moved to the Philadelphia County, so it's going to be a long garage knock, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, put the cleats in, a couple tie up lines just for the dock so you don't float away. Um, so let's see if we can get her fired up.